Good evening and welcome to the Fishhawk Electronics 2024 new product release. I am Chris Larson. Don't adjust your screen to Trevor Sumption, circa <laughs> 1982. Yes, he is wearing the cool jacket. Let's see that jacket. That's pretty. I'm cool. actually gonna, I'm actually gonna do a spin. Yeah, show everybody what you got. Look at that thing. So there's actually a story. There's actually a story with the jacket. So this, I actually got a, a package in the mail here. That's probably six months ago. I, yeah. I think I called you and I got I'm like, this thing's cool. So this is, this comes from one of the OG Fishhawk employees who was cleaning out an attic or a closet or something. And, uh, and they found their employee issue Fishhawk jacket and they were kind enough to, uh, kind enough to send it to me. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to save this for a special occasion. And, and, uh, this is that occasion. This is a special occasion. We've got new products that we're happy to send everybody. We're seeing all the comments. It's cool to see people really, really excited about this. Um, but before we do that, since we're talking about OG, yeah, let's go through kind of how this product has evolved from the beginning. And you brought some old. I did. I, I, I grabbed. I grabbed a few. Uh, I grabbed a few pieces from the archives and. Uh, and uh, some of the people that are that are watching right now are going to recognize these. But you know, you start and you go back to the old 500 series, the 500s, which was uh, you know basically just a, a temperature probe on a cable with a little you know gear-driven line counter on it. So that's really kind of where the whole temperature product line started, and uh, that's going all the way back into the 70s. Uh, and then you had um, kind of the first sonar sending units. Uh, you know, so actually Fishhawk, as some people know was originally a sonar company so we made uh fish i've made you know one some of the very first flasher type sonar products i had some of those in the archive too i didn't bring them but um you know this was kind of the first uh the 500 600s and then uh the 840 so these are these are the first units that are sending data back to the boat right so just you know kind of the same theory of operation that we still use today uh, so uh, this happens to be an 840 and, and uh, a lot of people out there still probably recognize that unit but that unit was in production from probably about the same time they released this jacket mm -hmm. um, all the way up into the early 2000s, which is a crazy long run. Um, and then uh, from there, we go over to, uh, you know, to the X4 series. Uh, most of the people, a lot of the people watching are familiar with, uh, uh, are familiar with that product. And uh, we actually introduced the, uh, um, the uh, X4 series uh, when we, uh, when we acquired the company and that was uh, back in uh all the way back in 2009, um, and here we are in 23. I guess that's like, what is it, 14 years? I, yeah. I, yeah. So uh, here we are, and uh, we're getting ready to talk about something new. Yeah, we're uh, we're moments away from 2024. I uh, hope everybody is excited about December and things coming up. And I've seen already in the comments a lot of people excited about fishing this spring already. And we have our new release video. Uh, features Captain Casey Prisco, and we're super excited to show that off to you. Let's play that video. Twelve miles west of Wilson is the Niagara Bar, where the Niagara River flows into Lake Ontario. It's the perfect storm of nutrient-rich water, which attracts schools of bait fish and big salmon. And they're here for one reason, the pack on the pounds. You won't find a higher concentration of kings in the Great Lakes than right here, right now. The fishing can be challenging. Unpredictable currents can throw off your presentation. My clients expect me to put fish in the boat. Knowing the speed and temperature at depth is always important, but here it's imperative. If you don't have a fish hawk, you're dead in the water. Now, fish hawk is charging ahead. The new lithium series incorporates four decades of experience with the lithium power anglers expect in modern electronics. The maintenance-free probe 
is 40% smaller and has an internal lithium polymer battery that provides a weekend's worth of fishing on a single charge. Wireless smart charging recharges the probe in minutes. Optional Bluetooth communication and probe depth are also available. I wouldn't dream of fishing without a Fishhawk. And now with the new Lithium Series, Fishhawk electronics are better than ever. We call him Hollywood Prisco. He looks good up here. And I, I like, you know, he spit out a few words too, you know, better than ever. We worked on that line for a long time, better than ever. Yeah, we, we finally said, you know what? It's got to be authentic. We can't, like, be we, authentic. Can't, we can't like edit this. And uh, so it's like this perfect diction and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. Well, let's bring him on right now, Captain Casey Briscoe. Captain, how are you doing? Good, buddy. How are you guys? Just living the dream, but not quite like you. You're not in New York right now. Tell us a little bit about where you're at. Uh, I am on my way to Key West, but on the way, Cooper has asked me to take him quail hunting. So I've quail hunted a few days down here, Georgia and Florida. Um, then I'm headed to Key West for our guys' annual fishing trip. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm really looking forward to trying to get that jacket from Trevor. I mean, that. <laughs> let me tell you, I think I've seen Hugh Hefner wearing that before. You know it's what I mean? Legit. That's that is legit. Call, my, my kids call that drip. It is so, grippy. That's that's yeah. grippy. So. <laughs> Somebody just said Cooper has the life. Cooper spends his summers fishing, and then Papa Casey takes him out and takes him hunting all fall. Yeah, he, well, he's such a good dog on the boat, um, and I I love watching him go from that boat dog to hunting dog. So he. Um, we just got back from Canada. We did a big trip with uh, Canada for six days and then Michigan for a few days and then headed to South Dakota for 10 days. And we shot three different species of grouse, some pheasants. It was uh, just an amazing trip. And it's, it's amazing to watch how he transitions from the mellow boat dog who wants to get some treats in the morning and go take a nap downstairs to if it's a bird, he's going to find it and we're killing it. <laughs> it's a rough life for Cooper. Has he seen the video? Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's seen he's, he watches he watches all yeah. the videos. Yeah, I haven't gotten a bill for that yet, so I, I, I'm kind of expecting. He, he's looking for day. he's looking for a jacket too. Okay. <laughs> we'll get we'll get him a nice aqua vest. That'd be, that'd be nice. So. Perfect. So we, perfect. We showed people the probe now forty percent smaller. It's rechargeable. It's a fully sealed system. Casey, you had the opportunity. Now, you've been fishing with this for a long time. Uh, tell folks what, what you've experienced fishing with the new system. I absolutely love it. Um, the, the idea of not having to worry about batteries um, is amazing. The smaller size, you can watch. There's definitely less blowback that I've found. Um, you know, especially on the east end of the lake, there's a lot of currents. Um, I like that it's not that clear colored. Um, probe it's you know a smoke colored um the speed and everything that's been with it has been perfect for me um i i love the head unit i love i love the whole thing i like the idea of it um because i did have problems with batteries and with the wires getting kinked and um knock on wood i think when did the, i don't know when we did that video but since then no issues so it's been a while yeah, and the other thing that we keep talking about, we show the probe, the rechargeable probe, much smaller size. You don't have blowback. Just things work so much better with this new probe. But the display, too, you know, a lot of these guys that are fishing, we're right now, we're trying to watch some of these comments, and we're squinting because the screen's a little bit too far for us right now. Or, but, or we're old. Or we're old. You know, we're not getting, getting any younger. But with this screen... Just big digits, easy to read. What's what's been your your experience so far, Casey, with with the display up and down as well? It's been perfect. Um, I like it. You know, I, I think it actually looks a hundred times better than the other one. Um, sorry, but it's the truth. Um, I have no problem <laughs> no problem with it linking to my Canon Optimums. Um, you can link it to my phone. I've had no issues at all. Um, 
I think you guys definitely put some some time and effort into you know doing this right before setting it out, and I think it's appreciated and it will be appreciated by everybody once they see the product and actually use it. Um, it just it makes sense. It's so much easier. You don't have to worry about your batteries. It, it's I, I use the probe. I'm not going to quote, but you can get at least a weekend and a few extra days out of it before you have to charge it. And that was doubles every day. Um, and that was me. I mean, granted, it could be different. I don't want to, you know, if somebody's, oh, Casey said it was going to last six days. It'll last a while. Um, definitely last a while. It's easy enough to charge. Um, I actually throw it on the charger in between trips. Um, I don't know the exact how long it takes to charge back up, but I've had no problems with it at all. Um, quick, simple, easy. Like you said, it's compact. Um, and I, I think it's less, uh, less annoying to the fish down there, to be honest with you. I think sometimes like I can watch them pan optics. I think they're coming in and I think that big clear fish hawk, I think sometimes it was scaring my fish away. This one, I don't think so. It's smaller. It almost, it, it fits right in. It fits right in the spread. So yeah, we've heard from a couple of different captains who've said, you know, they're painting their dipsies black. They're trying to go stealth. And they've been using this thing, and they're, they're really seeing a difference with the stealth mode. Just a smaller probe and, and just that, that smoky and, and that dark color has really helped them out. They feel like they've been, been able to bring uh, to the fish a lot more of a, a stealth type of presentation. I agree. That's, that kind of surprised me just how often we heard that from, you know, from the field testers. Because, I mean, every once in a while, we'd see a probe that will come back and it'd be painted black or something like that. And, it wasn't, you know, wasn't very widespread, but uh, it was, it was interesting. In fact, Chris and I were just commenting on this week. Uh, uh, one of our, uh, one of our testers uh, kind of gave us some detail about that and saw it. That was a, uh, that was an unintended, uh, yeah, unintended benefit maybe. So, yeah, we didn't see that coming, but it, it definitely by doing that, it, it really helped out. And like I said, most of the people who have tested the product, and we, we've had, you know about 50 of these out in the field for for the season and and they're coming back to us and saying yeah this thing is uh is really we're noticing a difference with it tell me a yeah, little you guys bit nailed about, it tell me a little bit about your season casey what was it like out on lake ontario ontario this year all in all it was just an unbelievable year um we got in the water i think march 1st and um, from March 1st, to, I think I pulled the plug September 23rd, I think was our last charters. Um, just unbelievable year. It seemed like everything thrived, brown trout, lake trout, steelhead, kings, cohos, you name it. Um, it was just a really, really good year on the lake. Um, the weather seemed to be a, a gentle on us this year. It can definitely, uh, cause havoc out there. And for the most part, it, it did not, um, we had a great year on the lake, ran a, a ton of charters, our most we've ever ran, um, uh, this year um but we're happy with that it was definitely awesome being on the water that much we won the salmon slam in wilson and i will say the fish hawk definitely played a big role in that um i don't want to get into it too much but without seeing a, a difference in a current <laughs> I know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not going there i'm not going there but okay. it definitely uh it definitely helped um with a key fish the, the one of our last fish uh the conditions changed a little bit and I was chasing other people's fish and I said to myself, what the, what the F am I doing? I turned and went out to where I was fishing and fished the way I was fishing the whole week. And it was about 25 minutes. We tripled and I caught the fish that we needed uh, to seal the deal and to beat Pete Alex by 38 pounds. And, and that's the Not, important no. thing. Right, not three point, not three point eight pounds, Chris or Trevor. Thirty, thirty eight pounds, and, and he's gonna say, go. he's gonna say, <laughs> I went sixty miles to get my lake trout. Well, you know what? Nothing stopped him from doing it, and if he wanted to get little ones close to home, he could do it too. The, the you gotta that, want it. That I found with Casey is if Casey got second to last, perfect. It doesn't matter as long as, as he beat Pete Alex. Right. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, it's a, Pete, it's and you know was, what? Pete probably has what jacket like Trevor's. It's probably not the same color because like Trevor's like the head guy, but he's probably yeah. like got like a maroon one or a red one. You know, it's like levels, like the Fishhawk Mafia back in the day. They're probably all like big guys. You know, they're putting hurt on people. You know, that's probably why uh, Sub Troll's gone and a couple of others. And you know, they probably had their guys go out and take care of things behind the scenes. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. No, exactly. That's a good answer. That's the way. That's this stuff. That's the way to answer. That's good answers. Don't ever incriminate yourself. Plead the fifth. So, so we filmed that video that you guys all saw in Wilson, and Casey runs over to Wilson, New York, uh, for about a month during the season, and his boat is docked. There's basically one boat between him and Pete. And if you were looking for a comedy show but don't want to pay. Just go down to that dock and just hang out down there when the boats are coming in and just watch those two trade barbs all day long. It's it's as good as the improv. Do you guys do you guys realize that we shot that video in May of twenty two? Right. And that's I think that you know, we talked in the, the emails that you guys have all received that we've put a ton of time into development here. I mean, we shot the marketing video a year and a half ago and we've just continuously we've been improving this product as we go we've got a lot of time into this thing to get it to where it is right now and and we had actually talked about maybe maybe bringing it out for this year but it wasn't quite where we wanted it to be and we just kept putting time into it and there's a bunch of questions coming up we're going to get to those questions here in a little bit but um you know there's a lot of time and a lot of effort and we like we said we, you know this has been on the boats of about 50 different guys in the last you know, three or four months, and you know, this thing has been. We put a lot of work in. Yeah, I mean, I get accused of being like at the office, anyways. I get accused of not being the most dynamic on camera, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so that's kind of the running joke. But like, I can honestly say that this is probably the happiest day of my work here. <laughs> right. we finally, we finally get to talk about this and say, okay, yeah, let's let's go, let's let's do this. So. It's no longer a secret, and we got to thank guys like Casey Prisco. Oh, Casey's going to get coop, I think. We got to thank guys like Casey Prisco, who, I mean, Casey's actually had this on his boat for. A year and a half and i'm sure clients have seen it um but you know he hasn't been putting stuff up on his website and showing this off like he's got this thing under wraps as we continue to improve it and finally we're at a point where we can show it to the consumer i was getting nervous when casey, when casey goes off camera it's right. like, what's he going to come back on camera with that's what right that's what, that's what i was that's what i was kind of going through in my mind it was a little bit of a little bit of panic there so <laughs> well, I can tell you, I appreciate you guys taking the time to make it right. I don't know how many times something comes out and it's not made right. And it's nothing but frustrations for us. And you guys have definitely showed that, you know, you care about us and you care about your products and kudos to you guys for taking the time to do that. That's a, uh, that's huge. Well, it wasn't uh, without help from people like you. And we're going to get into this here a little bit longer. I mean, Trevor spent a lot of time testing as well and i can't tell you how many times i called them this summer and like what are you doing oh, i'm in the boat right now and people think oh testing you must be fishing all summer long and what they don't realize is we don't have any rods in there's the no rods in the water <laughs> he's just pulling probes around the lake actually i had to retune my motor because it was so carved up because it just ran an idle all summer long so. yeah yeah so a lot of time and effort's gone into this and uh casey thanks again for being part of our project and basically thanks for having start thanks for having us, us that was an absolute blast i gotta stand corrected it's 26 pounds not 38 pounds you know <laughs> did, did Pete it's, you? It's, it's, yeah yeah it's only a quarter of 100 pounds it's no big deal you know what i mean it's, it's only <laughs> only 26 pounds in a seven fish contest i mean 26 pounds sorry pete you know it's almost four pounds of fish that i beat him by but who's keeping track of that stuff it's three and a half if he really wants to know yeah Each and, fish. And we'll, We'll give Pete an opportunity at some point here to to clear the air because I'm sure he has a story for this too. And at some Don't point, wait, we'll let him... Chris. Don't wait too long. He's getting old and he's forgetting stuff. <laughs> All he's right. got a yeah, note. Been... Take your take your men's one a day. Put your shoes on after you put your socks on. He's he's it's bad. <laughs> it's bad. He's working on it. Captain Casey Prisco from Dirty Goose Sport Fishing. Enjoy Florida, and hopefully you and Cooper have a good time. I know uh, you got some snow up in your neck of the woods this week, so I'm sure it's really nice feeling those warm sun rays on you right now. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the snow. I do. Um, actually, Cooper loves the snow, too, but it just uh, – quail hunting was way better than the snowstorm. Let's put it that way. And so will QSB. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you for having me, and thank you for everything you guys do for us. It's awesome. All right, Captain Casey Prisco, thanks so much for coming on. Guys, Take have care. a good night.
You too. And for those of you guys out there wanting to win the new Ultra, we'll be giving you an opportunity to do that a little bit later in the show. But we're getting loaded up with questions, and let's kind of address some of those things. People are coming on, and they've got a lot of questions. Um, one of them here, someone asked, uh, how long does the battery last? So the design spec was a weekend of fishing, and that's what that was our that was our goal was okay. You know, we want we want somebody to be able to come up to the lake on Friday, fish all weekend, and not have to charge this um, until until they get home. Um, honestly, we just blew past that number. So most of the people um, most of the people field testing uh, reported. You know, we're getting you know upwards of 70 hours is what we were seeing so what we're saying is that uh we're, what we're saying for a number just to make it simple is that you're going to get at least 50 hours between charges yeah. and that's 50 hours of fishing time that's right. not that's not 50 hours you know that's actually 50 hours in the water the probe like uh, like the x4s um the probe is water activated so okay. when it's in the water it's on when it's out of the water it's off um but uh yeah the the battery life number we're putting out the 50 hour number that's actual 50 hours of fishing yep so and we're just telling people you're going to get a weekend's worth of fishing and the other question that i'm hearing all the time right now is how long does it take to fully charge so fully charged from like dead is uh, about two hours and so when you uh, and we don't have the, i should have put the power on that actually i could do that uh uh, but full, so fully to fully charge it from zero is two hours. Mm -hmm. um, but you can actually bring it up to about eighty percent within about twenty minutes. Yep. So it, it charges it charges pretty rapidly, and it's it's kind of like your uh, it's kind of just like your phone, you know, where that last you know that last uh, twenty percent consumes most of the energy. Yep. Um, so it's kind of the same exact exact deal. So when you look at that and. and uh, uh, you know you can put a charge on it so what i'm just doing here right now is i'm just hooking up just a regular power pack like everybody carries now yep. and we just learned kind of through experience that this is the slickest way to charge the you know charge the probe so when it's on here and i'm doing this in reverse so i can't really see it so i think you can see the light yeah, yes yeah okay so it's on the charger right now so when you see the light it's charging um and uh, eventually that light will go off when it's fully charged um, and it'll the, the blue ring on the charger will still uh, stay lit, indicating that it's in the right spot. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's that's all there is. And these, you know, everybody's everybody carries these already, anyways. Yep. So that's what we found is, you know, I mean, everybody's got a USB port, or a lot of people have a USB port. But uh, convenience wise, it seems like the battery, you know, these auxiliary packs are, are the way to go. You can pick those up in a box store for ten dollars. Yeah, exactly. And you always you always have that and. You know, we saw it a few times where you go out and you're like, oh, man, I forgot to charge this thing. Exactly. You can pop it on here and you're ready to fish in 20 minutes. Yep. You can go. So on your way out to wherever you're going to fish, pop on the charger, let it charge, and you're ready to rock. So it doesn't take long to charge. The other question that that we're getting as well, is this lithium battery in there replaceable? And it's a fully sealed system. But what we've done is this. Tell them how long, how many charges you get. Well, you get, I mean, a minimum of 5,000 charges. So they're, they're, you know, lithium batteries do degrade over time. So the number of charging cycles. But, you know, you, you'd have to put this, you'd have to go through 2,000 charging cycles before before you would ever, you know, before that battery, you know, starts to, to degrade where it's not coming up to that, you know, to the level that it was. You know, that being said, um, you know, you start doing the math, you know, okay, we're going to get, you know, 50 plus hours out of it. You, you know, it's, it's going to last a lot of time. Right. So. Yeah. So, I mean, you're looking at 2,000 fishing trips. Minimum. Yeah, I... I would, love, I would love to get two dollars. <laughs> right. So, I mean, if, yeah. you, if you can wear that thing out, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're, you're living right if you're wearing it out. You're living right if you're wearing it out. Um, and then we're getting a bunch of questions right now about um, how it plays with the old system. Um, Hundred percent backwards compatible. So backwards compatible is just the fancy term for it works with everything out there. So that means it works with your X4. It works with uh, um, your X4Ds, you know, the the, the Pro and the end. We'll talk about models, you know, specifically a little bit here. Uh, but yes, it, it, it plugs and plays with everything. And that even goes all the way back to the 840. I mean, you know, there's, there's still a few 840s out there. Uh, 
live and kicking, but uh, yeah, same 70, so same 70 kilohertz signal that, that we've used for, for a long, long time. Uh, the transducer that's on the back of the boat, it's the same transducer. Yeah. Uh, so it really what we're talking about is we're talking about new display um, and, and the new probe. The new boat itself. And if they are wired for the old display in the boat, yep. is this plug and play? Plug and play. Every, everything's plug and play. So uh, backwards compatible, plug and play, whatever you want to call it. Um, the, the most important thing is it works and there's no pairing. There's no nothing. It's literally plug it in and turn it on. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm looking down on my phone, I'm just checking out everyone's questions. We have it up on the screen, but it's really hard for me to read that far away. So I'm checking out everyone's questions here as we go. Um, Someone just said, hey, great job thinking of the backwards compatibility and going there. Um, you want to talk about the display a little bit? We've talked yeah. about the probe, and I think yep. that's kind of the... the probe, I mean, the, the probe's the obvious one, just because yeah. of the size, you know, that's what that's the first thing that you're drawn to is is, is how much smaller it is. Actually, as long as we're doing that, this is kind of like, the, you know, you look at, like, the progression of the, of the probes. It's like, you know, you started with that 840, you know, went to the X4, so we cut that about half, and then we... Yeah, cut it in half about kids. So that's kind of fun to look at that. But yeah, the, the display itself. So um, the, the way we use a display is, is pretty darn simple. We we want something that's easy to read. Uh, we want uh, it, it doesn't uh, it it needs to be good at what it does, but it it doesn't need to be overly complicated for for what we're doing. So um, what's what's cool about this display is uh, um, you know. The, the look, you know, Casey mentioned the look of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's not by accident. So we, we really designed this. Uh, it's, it's, one, it's, it's called a glass over design, which means it's an actual piece of solar glass. So it's actual real glass. It's not plastic. Uh, so it's an actual piece of glass that's, uh, that uses a adhesive gasket all the way around it uh, that sticks over, you know, that sits over the face of the LCD itself. And uh, that design is, is very common on all your high-end electronics now. So... Mm -hmm. You, know, you can kind of pick your brand, whether it's Garmin or Humminbird or Lawrence or you know uh, Ray or whoever. But uh, pretty much, uh, pretty much all um, you know multifunction displays uh, have a glass over design, a very clean look, uh, and this just complements that. So uh, um, where you know the the other display was you know aesthetically it was just a little bit different. So kind of I would say they're kind of traditional lines as far as the, the display itself goes. Uh, one thing that the glass, you know, using glass, the glass is much more scratch resistant, chemical resistant than, than plastic, obviously. Uh, and the other thing it does is it really lets us uh, weatherproof the displays a lot better because you've got this big adhesive gas all the way around it. So um, it looks better. Um, it's still very easy to read. It's, it's basically the same display as what we had before as far as the LCD inside of there. But it's more weatherproof, looks better, um, and just does a really good job at what it does. It's pretty simple. Uh, uh, we went to, we had a plastic bracket before mm -hmm. um, that you see, and, and sometimes we would see that that plastic bracket over the years of UV exposure, it would get brittle and break, guys would have to replace it. We just went back to a simple uh, standard aluminum, you know, gimbal bracket, uh, kind of no fuss, no muss, um, you know, this just a part that you would never have to replace again at this point. Uh, also, with that, uh, there's a uh, insert in the back of it, um, so it is RAM ball compatible. So you can put a, you can screw a RAM ball in there, uh, and uh, and then we of course have track adapters and such. You know that you know if you want to just get a track set up on a boat, you can you can slide that. In. But you can see the the gimbal rack itself. It's it's a pretty pretty standard issue uh, sample yeah. aluminum. You know, top. So. Yeah, and and, and bigger. I mean, yeah. yeah. Bigger. I think that's the main thing people yep. want to know. Hey, can they can they see those numbers? Yep. It's backlit as well. Yep. So if you you need that, and if you're going out in low light conditions, it's backlit. Mm -hmm. It gives you that as well. Um, let's pick out a couple other questions here if we can find. Oh, this is actually a great question from Mike Duggan, and he wants to know: uh, Is the signal better in deep water? It is. So uh, along with the uh, um, along with what we're doing, you know, efficiency wise with the battery. It actually, it actually is, you know, we actually are putting out more power. Um, one of our, um, actually came through this week from, uh, I think it was John Pollock up on uh, yep. uh, Surgeon Bay, uh, Wisconsin, uh, one of our field testers in there. Uh, he, he has made some interesting comments. And uh, one of the things that John noticed was how much better the readings were when it's, when it's a little bumpy out there. So like, uh, I, I think he said with, on, on his on his particular setup, you know, his, his X4 probes, he'd start to lose some signal, you know, when he gets in waves, you know, in that three and a half foot range, whatever. And I think he said he went 
all of that. I think he said it. he was getting rock solid signals and seven footers, and it's like, oh, I don't really want to do all the seven footers. Yeah, right. But that's uh, good on him, good on him. But um, but yeah, and that that's a that's a um, that's a function of putting out uh, uh, a little more signal strength uh, as far as the actual um, as far as from the probe itself, and then also being able to uh, tune this display a little more as well. You got a question here. Uh, what's the difference between the Pro and Ultra? And if you want to check these products out, we don't want you to leave the stream because we do have an opportunity for you to win an Ultra coming up here later in the show. But you can go to our website. Maybe if you're watching us on the big screen at home and you want to check out the website on your phone, go ahead and do that. Go to fishhawkelectronics.com. The product is all up there right now for you to see. You can actually order an Ultra right now. The other yeah. product's still, yeah. uh, still a week or so out. But... Uh, you can go on the website, fishhawkelectronics.com, and check out the product right now, and you'll get an opportunity to kind of see what the differences are. But um, we actually, we talked about three products, and we haven't talked about yeah, the multi yet. That's right. So let's go. We, we haven't really talked about the product. We haven't really no, talked we, about the breaker. We just talked about the system, right? right so, yeah, yeah let's, let's, let's do that. So so there's three, there's going to be three versions. I'm going to grab the other display here. Um, there's there's three versions or three models in the in the Lithium series, and, and the first one we're calling the Multi, uh, and, and really it's it's somewhat of a rebrand of the X2 in that it uses the same display in the X2. And also you'll notice that the the lines of this display, the construction of this display, really you really take from the X2 design. We we did this first with the X2, knowing that we would be doing that with uh, with the the um, the bigger screens as well. But um, so the the, the multi system, uh, this is the one that you can uh, that have where I put it. Uh, Multicom is, uh, is available uh, with the slip reducer, you know, like we use with the X2. Uh, we're also offering it with a transit mount reducer, and that was something we've seen here in the last, uh, oh, last, you know, couple of years. Was there were still people that, you know, even on, on, uh, um, you know, a boat, and that's why we call it the multi is for a multi species type right. boat, you know, kind of a portable type setup. Um, but we are, uh, you're able to get the multi in two configurations. You're able to get it either with a slip deucer uh, or you're able to get it with a transit mount deucer. So uh, that's the first one. That's the multi. Um, the next one uh, in line is the Pro. Uh, and the, the Pro display and the Ultra display, they look exactly the same. Uh, it's, it's just the readouts um, on the, as far as the data go. Uh, so the, the, the next one is the Pro. Um, for those people that are familiar with the line, think of the Pro as the replacement for the X4, right? So that's going to give you... Uh, surface temp, surface speed, and then your probe temp and your probe speed, all right? And then the Ultra, um, again, for those that are familiar with the existing, or, you know, with the previous product line, uh, think of that as your X4D. Um, and uh, what that is going to give you is it's going to give you the same surface info. It's going to give you the same probe info with the addition of the true depth. So it's got the pressure sensor in there. So that's the one that has depth. And that's also the one that has the, the Bluetooth uh, functionality uh, in the display. So if you look at it, things compared to the previous product line or last year's product line, you've got uh, the Multi uh, is taking over for the X2. You've got the Pro taking over for the X4. And you've got the Ultra taking over for the, for the X4D. I see Ron Winter in the green room. Ron, uh, your camera is not on. I, I see. Uh, so if you can tinker around with that for a minute, if I see uh, your your face pop up, we'll get you up on the screen. Ron Winter will be joining us in just a moment. And uh, Ron did some testing with us well. Looks like Ron's working on that right now as we speak. Um, people wanting to know, uh, yeah, there's a couple of questions here about uh, just the upgrade differences. And I think we just went through that. Um, how about update? People want to know how, how often that, that, that information updates on, on the screen. Uh, screen. So that's the same. So the, you know, the firmware really stays the same as far as, as far as, uh, you know, in this unit, as it did in the, uh, as it did in the X4s uh, and the X4Ds. So uh, that's a 20-second refresh on the X4 and a 27-second on the X4D. So, so that, that's where, what you're looking at yep. there. And it, so it's, just, it's, the same as, it's the same as what the uh, um, as what the X4 and the X4D had. And, and a big reason for that, honestly, is if you want backwards compatibility, that's that's kind of a must. That that has that that has to be the same. So, yeah. so if you want to be able to use this probe, and, and we have that option on the website for people who want to just use their old X4 display or or their old X4D display, or whatever, and they just want to go to the new probe, you can do that. 
Yeah. Like you don't have to get the display. You don't have to buy the whole new system. You can just get the probe and the charger. We sell that and you can just pop that and off you go. It's just like you've got a new system, except for you won't have the display. But the probe itself with the less blowback, the smaller size, you you can do that and, and essentially get yourself what acts as almost like a new system without putting that, that type of investment in. So that's one way to look at it as well. And, you know, we're always developing stuff and, you know, maybe, maybe at some point there'll be something different coming, but this was a product that we wanted to put out because we saw what we could do with this probe and how big of an impact that this could make. So we wanted to do that. And, and that's the thing, you, you got to be careful. I mean, you know, you look at kind of the progression and, and certainly the X4 was a big jump forward from the 40 probes. Mm-hmm. and. And we wanted this product to have the same impact. You know, we wanted this product to really to to advance that performance, um, you, you know, to that next level. And I think we've done that. And um, but but you know, I didn't want to put something out that that didn't do that, right? I mean, so it's like it's like I'm not going to introduce a new product just for the sake of introducing a new product. Um, we we wanted to make sure that if we're going to do this, that that uh, there's actually uh, you know the, the customers are going to see a benefit from it rather than just a, a different looking package so so here's a here's another good question uh can i use my wireless phone charger with this absolutely so this this charger has the the fishhawk logo on it but it's it's you know it's the same charger that you can buy on amazon for i mean you could probably buy it on amazon cheaper than what we can buy it for <laughs> right you know, with our with our logo on it if, if we're being totally honest here but yes it's uh it, it's the same it's a, it's a standard phone charger very good. Yep. So uh, another question, just asking about the, the packaging. Um, can you offer a package with uh, just basically everything but the deucer to save a little money? So we do offer kind of components, but I think just the way it's going to break down, yeah. you're probably better off Correct. To, to get the whole yeah. new system. Yeah. If you wanted to get just the pro, you could do that. And, and usually, and, and the, the logic behind that, honestly, is kind of the same because if you, if you if you get that full system, at least then you can take and even if you didn't want to change the transducer on the boat, you can take and package you know your existing product with the new transducer, and then and now you've got something that's uh, that's easier to resell as a as a complete system rather than trying to you know sell all parts and pieces. So, all right, here's a good question from Scott Garbs, and I know you'll have the answer for this. Uh, the old system reads the new pro, but will the new system read the old pro? Absolutely. So there you go, Scott. Put that back. Yep. Either way, that that will work. Um, somebody just asked again. Lithium battery. We talked about that, but uh, you know, the lithium battery not replaceable. But again, we we've gone through the testing on this. You're going to get two thousand charges on that I mean, battery. How many how many times do you recharge your phone? Right. It's the same. It's the same. Uh, um, it's it's the same technology, and then that's really what that's really what, what really one of the driving forces behind this you know, behind this whole project is you look at, um, you know, I mean, you know, we, we know oil and water don't mix. Well, oil or water and batteries are about the same. Yeah, let's talk so, about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, so obviously, uh, you know, we ran, we ran with the X4 series for a long time and, and, uh, and X4 is still, a, it's still a great product, but you know, the, the one Achilles heel that it has is the, is the batteries and, and we've got, you know, um, anytime you can open that thing, uh, you you've got the opportunity that it's either going to leak or actually kind of like the 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 care and feeding maintenance part of it was you know that thing sealed up so tight that you know you, you go from warm you know warm water on top and then and then you put it down in the ice water. Well, that condensation is that condensation is is natural and it's going to it's going to you know build up in there, which creates pressure. Uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, guys wouldn't dry that out inside of that condensation. You get battery corrosion and all those kind of things. So um, that that was those were really the issues that we set out just to eliminate when we did this. And then and again, you know, using our using our phones as our inspiration. It's like, well, you know, the technology's out there. We just need to put it into a package that uh, you know that benefits us. So. Yeah. So what that was doing is. You know, you get that condensation, and, and we always tell people, if you're running the old system, when you get done fishing, make sure you unscrew that thing, let that condensation dries out, dry out, because that condensation causes a lot, a lot of issues. Um, getting a couple questions here about the battery. I, I, I get a kick out of this. Um, how will the probe react to cold water? Works great. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. We've been we've been testing this in uh in your lake up north there. It is a, it's a strip mine. Yep. And super, super deep. Yep. And you're running this thing down in 40 degree water. Yeah. Even during the summer we can run it in 40 degree water. So yeah, yeah. Uh, no no issues there with the uh with uh you know water temperatures really impacting the uh really impacting the um you know the, the battery performance. I shouldn't say no measurable issues. I mean we can we can't we, we haven't been able to really tell the difference uh you know in the water between 60 degree water and 40 degree water at this point so yeah so uh, here's another one again battery maintenance uh how about the off-season battery maintenance what do you recommend them um don't need to do anything yeah. i mean that's the thing you know it's 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 so uh it's it's really kind of set it and forget it i mean it, it, there's just there's just not a lot uh, just not a lot that needs to that needs to happen there so um no there's no real battery maintenance schedule that you need to uh, that you need to really follow uh, that, that we've been able to determine over the last you know kind of over those these three years of development so well i see another guy just popped up on the screen another person that had his opportunity uh -oh. to to play with this and it is uh, Captain Richard Hajeki. Let's go to Captain Richard. We're going to put our, our headphones on so we can hear him talk. What's going on, guys? Captain Hajeki, how you doing? Not bad. You're not in Florida, too, are you? No, I don't have that. Uh, not yet, at least. Um, <laughs> oh. I typically don't go until after boat show season. That's right. We, we yeah. are coming up on boat show season. We are coming up on boat show wow. season. We'll get a chance to hang out with Captain Rick. Captain Rick from CrazyYankeeSportFishing.com in New York, on the New York side of Lake Ontario. And Rick, uh, you actually were there that weekend that we shot the video. We let Casey be the star, but we did some fishing with you. And, and you've been running this thing for over a year now as well. Uh, tell us about your experiences. I think it's great. So I was I was watching the beginning of the video, and Trevor was showing all the um, the past fish hawk models that were there. And I remember I've been fishing this lake since I was six years old. Um, I remember the old 840. We were running the old 840. We ran the the X4D, and uh, and now we had a chance to run this one. This one's uh, this one's really nice. So um, we'll start with the display. I do a lot of installs at the marina. And the display is uh, a lot cleaner looking. Um, it, it looks similar to other electronics on the market. So it kind of blends right into the dash nicely. Um, I wasn't sure Trevor was going to mention the uh, the back of the display has that. I think he said it was a quarter 20 mount, Trevor. Yeah, that's right. Um, I noticed that um, right off the bat and that for me, again, with installations gives me other options. So, so that was nice to see. As far as the probe goes, you know, anytime you can get something smaller to give you less blowback, that's a benefit. Um, I've been running 150 pound power pro on my downriggers forever. And I do that because I want my blowback to be as, as least as possible. Um, when you've got customers on board that are, are not great on the rods and they get green fish to the back of the boat, the last thing you want is a downrigger cable that's swinging way back behind the boat. So a smaller probe that makes your downrigger lines more efficient, I guess is what I call it, is always uh, a benefit. Um, and then the fact that you don't have to replace batteries, I can't tell you how many times over the years you uh, your probe starts acting funky or it just stops altogether. And you head out into the cabin and look for a set of batteries and guess what? They're, you use the last set and forgot to replace them. So not having to worry about that is great. And I guess in today's world, we're used to putting our phones on charge daily or every other day and this kind of follows suit with that so i feel like um you know that shouldn't be a big change for people so a lot of benefits in the new setup so i'm excited yeah something uh something that uh, that was interesting to me when we when we first started you know when we finally got the the housing design the way we want it, but how much nicer the probe tracks. Mm -hmm. And and this was this again, this was something that we, you know, we didn't really realize how much it was happening. But what we noticed was uh, when you look at it, you put an X4 on the uh, X4 probe in the water, it almost has like a crankbait wiggle to it. You know, it has, uh, you know, it, 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 it kind of moves through the water and it has its own wiggle. So we always actually attributed that to, to vibration in the cable. Um, but it actually did have to do with the, the probe shape. So one of the things that, that we noticed with, with the uh, lithium probes is they track straight as an arrow. They, they, don't, they don't move around at all. And uh, 
the biggest kind of benefit I that we've seen out of it performance wise is it's on the low end of the speed spectrum. So if it, and it's I would say probably not as much for somebody who's fishing salmon because you're usually fishing, you know, above kind of that, you know, one six threshold or one eight threshold, you know, as far as your probe speed goes. But this thing it, it really works well at, at low speed. So you get down 0.6, 0.8, you know, really kind of your walleye type, you know, spinner trolling speeds. We actually noticed that right away, and that was something that that we weren't expecting, and it was uh, it was uh, uh, you know kind of a a nice uh, nice add on. And, and as we as we fished with it more and more and more, we saw that play out over time, where it uh, you know the the subtle speed changes or at the real world speeds, uh, this probe definitely does a better job of of reacting to that. So. Yeah, did you see that, Rick? Yep. Yep. Uh, I know you just did a video. You've got a new boat, uh, new Yankee coming next spring, and you did a video on the helm and and kind of where you're going to put things together. Um, what did you think of the new display? I think it's going to look great. Like I said, it 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 mimics a lot of the displays on the market now. It's got that nice glass finish in the front, um, so it's going to blend in perfectly. Now I don't spend a lot of time with the helm, unfortunately, um, so I'm a big proponent of the ultra or the old x4d because i've got that information on in the back of the boat on my downriggers i also have it on my hummingbirds back there um so that feature for me is what i like about the whole system is i don't have to keep looking up at the helm or worrying about what's up at the helm because i spend most of the time in the back of the boat um so the, the new display looks great. Uh, I think it's going to look great on, on the dashes of boats when we're installing them. And uh, it'll look great on the dash of the new boat that I have, but uh, I don't spend much time up there. <laughs> That's I'm, my I'm getting, a, <laughs> I'm getting a few questions coming through. Uh, someone asked about, uh, about the blowback. And, and what did you see there as far as blowback with this probe compared to the old one? Um, it, like I said, anytime you go smaller with what you're putting down there in the water and dragging through the water, you're going to see gains. Now, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't measure the blowback, you know, the differences between the two. Um, honestly, once I put that one in the water, I don't believe I, I put the export, the old export pro back in the water. I just kind of kept that on the, uh, on the downrigger. And, um, so there's definitely less blowback, but it wasn't something that I got out there and, and measured. Um, but like I said, anytime you can you can minimize the size of the stuff you're dragging through the water, um, you know you're going to be more efficient. I I think it's more of a slipstream thing, honestly. I mean, I, it, this this probe just cuts through the water better. Mm -hmm. So without kind of the um, you know, and and especially like with uh, with guys that are running braid, you know, with running power probe, I mean, they're they're taking a lot of blowback out just by you know switching from cable, but. Uh, I just notice, you know, when I'm going back and forth all the time, I just notice just how much smoother it goes through the water, and and, and uh, it just it just seems like it just tracks a lot nicer. So. Very good. Anything else for Captain Rick to check before we let him go? I know. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for all your input, and uh, thanks for uh, thanks for helping us put it through the bases. Yeah, man. Thank you guys for uh, letting me help you out. It's been fun, and uh, looking forward to it. Rick, how was the season out on uh, Lake Ontario for you this past year? And uh, what are you looking forward to with the new rig? Yeah, so like I said earlier, I've been doing this since I was six years old. I'm in my mid forties now. Um, so I kind of understand that we, out, the outdoors in general, the, the fishery in general is very cyclical. You have your good years, you have your bad years. Um, for me to say it was a great year, some people may agree with me. Some people may disagree with me. I think there was lots of fish to go out there and catch this year. I think anybody who fished Lake Ontario this year noticed that. Um, the salmon fishing was great. You, and you had your other species you could target if you wanted to. If you judge a fishery by the size of the fish in the fishery, um, I would say it wasn't a great year. We had some of the smaller or smallest salmon um, on record. Uh, maybe not on record, but if you look at our derbies throughout the season, weights were down a pound, two pounds across the board. So, um, you know, it all depends on how you judge your fishery. Is it, uh, you know, most guys, especially in today's culture, it's, you know, 
uh, they want action. They want, or else people get bored. Um, so if if that's what you're after is lots of action and catching fish, then yeah, you know, it was a great season out there. Probably one of the better seasons we've had in a while. But if you're out there trying to chase trophy salmon, maybe it wasn't the season for you, but um, you know, just a few years ago, there were mid 30 pound salmon being taken out of the lake. Um, and I believe there was one pushing 40 a couple years ago. So I'm sure they'll come back at some point or somebody will find one eventually. But, um, you know, overall, I would say it was a great season. Very good, Rick. He's Captain Rick Najecki from Crazy Yankee Sport Fishing on the New York side of Lake Ontario. Captain Rick Najecki, uh, thanks so much for joining us tonight. And again, appreciate all your work that went into this project. Uh, without you, we wouldn't be here. All right, guys, stay in touch. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Thank Captain Ricky uh, Jackie. And I see uh, Ron Winter looks like he's ready to go. But before we go to Ron, though, uh, our friend Ed Grover. Ed. And, and Ed asking Ed like questions. So, Ed, Ed you know, he fishes. Actually, I, I owe Ed some probes, actually. Well, they're, they, they're ready to order. Oh, yeah. So, Ed fishes in Oregon. He uses fish hawk out there. But they also dump the, the boat out into the Pacific Ocean. So he has a couple of Pacific Ocean related questions. One, how fast did you test the probe? Okay. And you did very fast. And yep. then, of course, he wants to know if he can use it in salt water. Well, salt water, yes. Uh, so my very fast and Ed's very fast are during the day. So, so my, very, my very fast is like five miles an hour. Ed's very fast is like, 12 or right. you know i mean he they're trolling for albacore uh, offshore and and, and uh but uh the real answer to that was is if you can keep the probe pointing in the right direction you know you can probably get it but uh i i actually uh i can't i can't say that uh, i can't say that 10 miles an hour is gonna work so but i do know the five works so right. push it up to five so there you go let's bring in uh ron winter and it looks like ron's got the technical issue solved ron, yes welcome to the show hey, hey. how you doing my hey, friend? guys Nice to see you guys again, Chris, Trevor. Nice to see you. Yeah. I had some technical Thanks, difficulties. I apologize. Hey, uh, no I worries. I have a seven-year-old Apple laptop computer, and I couldn't, the, connect, the camera wouldn't connect. So I got my oh, no. junior, 18-year-old son, a senior in high school, who has a one-year-old Apple computer. And I said, and everything's I good, right? camera. I spent about five minutes, and they said, hey, I go, go get your, go get your, go get your computer. Please, I'm begging you. So he went out and got it. So boom, the camera worked. Actually, we're actually, here. we have a we have a, a podcast host that uh, yeah. that just went through a similar type situation there. So you're not alone. So we're rocking the PC now, Ron. No more Apple. So uh, let, let me uh, <laughs> let me uh, I guess let me maybe let me start and introduce Ron. So uh, yeah, so, I, think, I think this is these are really important pieces. Yeah, Ron is, and and, and Ron is a guy that that I mean. Ron's just a fisherman, right? I mean, Ron is yes. a captain and whatever, and and, and and he's pretty well known on, on some of the forums. Uh, Ron Ron's out uh, Lake Lake Champlain way, and uh, I don't know when we first met Ron, but it's probably going back a decade or, or more. But um, when we started the whole testing process, like Ron was the first guy on my list, and, and the reason being is is there. There is not a more methodical fisherman on the planet than than Ron, as far as documenting everything and, and whatever. So, so you, you talk to you talk to somebody like Rick. You know, Rick's job is to go out there and put, you know, put, put fish in the boats for clients, right? So mm -hmm. that's where his focus has to be. And and Ron, uh, you know, uh, Ron's out there giving us his time, and, and he's out there fishing, and he's like. It's like he's it's like he's an employee practically, and he's not. And he's 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 just so. Anyway, Ron, thank you so much for all the time and, and detail that you put into it. Because honestly, there's just there's nobody that we work with that that you know puts in the uh, puts in the hours on this that that you have. So really do appreciate your time. You know, the one caveat is I think Ron has lost more of these probes than <laughs> yes. than uh, most people. But uh, but uh, we went we went through a pretty bad stretch where uh, we had we some un unlucky stuff. But uh, but other than that, uh, it was uh, it was awesome. So yeah, we actually just got a we just got a question from Jack Buckmaster, and he wants to know how do I retrieve the probe if the cable breaks? <laughs> so not a better guy to answer than Mr. Ron Winter. But I think what's very cool though is you lost one, and tell us how many days did you drive oh, over that probe yeah. and still get the signal. 
Well, yeah, that's that's kind of interesting because uh, the second one that we lost was only in uh, 42 feet of water. And uh, so after we lost it, my fishing line went right down to it. And I, I was hoping it would get wrapped around the release so that we could lift it up because it was a six pound ball attached to this probe. And uh, of course, the line came out of the release. And I was like, shucks. So we put in the waypoint. And uh, so I started doing circles, figuring we would get to narrow it down to where we pick up the signal, then the signal would go away. So I kept probably did this for 20 minutes. So I put in waypoints all around where I picked up the signal. So I had a central location. Now, the next day we came back, it was still working because we were catching salmon on this spot. And I brought a cinder block with a Clorox bottle. And so we sunk that in the water right there in the middle of that spot. So we can come back. Now, this was in May. So we could come back in around early July when the water's warm enough for my brother-in-law to dive. So he wouldn't freeze to death down there. So we come back in July, short story, come over the spot. And I go, I think this is it right here. I'm watching my, you know, my GPS, my points. And we stopped the boat. He went down 15 feet away. He found the cinder block and the Clorox bottle hanging about three feet above it as a marker. He's like, we got this. Well, the only issue was soft mud in the bottom. When you retrieve that block, you could see the mud on the block about uh, come up about three and four inches. And this is only a six pound ball, okay? Because we were only in May fishing 20 feet down. And uh, that this that, that little probe, we can see it behind my head, you know, blend, must have blended in really well. He couldn't find it. He was so disappointed. So we thought we had this. But you, you were you drove over this thing for several days. And you were still picking it up on your display as you're driving over. Yeah. And so that's right. And we came back the third day and it was still giving us a signal. Now, up to this point, the probe had 20 hours on it. So we just kept adding 24 hours, 24 hours. I was up to 92 hours uh, on the third day. And yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and again, Ron, Ron, is, Ron is the guy that like I can trust to say, okay, go out, charge the thing up, and tally how many hours you ran on it. And Ron's like the guy, he logged every single one of those hours. So again, his attention to detail, um, you know, he's really giving something back to the sport because uh, because uh, if Ron tests it and it works, I, I feel pretty darn good about it. So. Yeah, Ron, very meticulous with what he does. If you're hanging on to uh, win that Fish Hawk Ultra, we're going to give you details on that in just a little bit here. We're getting close to the time where we're going to do that. Uh, but, Ron, uh, you talked a little bit about kind of your experiences and and losing the probe. But how about just fishing with with the new system? What were your experiences there? Uh, very positive. Uh, you know, as Richard Hajeki said, you know, that I mean, this thing has such a small, small profile. And, you know, as far as blowback is concerned, and, and that's pretty huge, especially when you're down 70, 80, 100 feet, you know, and uh, it has such a sm small profile. It's just, you're going to like this. Okay. So a couple days ago, I'm saying, oh, what can I bring to the table here? So what I did, I took my wife's scales out of the, out of the uh, kitchen, brought them in here. It only goes to four pounds. I put the old probe on and weighed it with the batteries. I said, let's, let's see what the difference is. It was 13.4 ounces. Then I took the new probe, weighed that. Well, that one only weighed 7.8 ounces. So that's like about less than half a pound. That thing is so light. And if you look behind me, I'll try to bring my computer up so you can see. I store this thing on my downrigger now because I'm not worried about that, that heavier one shaking around and losing either trailering or on the road. Because I do a lot of trailing. I trailer several thousand miles, probably four, three or 4,000 miles a year. So now I have the uh, confidence that... Uh, I can leave that thing tethered to my downrigger and not have to take it on and off all the time. So that was a huge, that, I mean, that, that was pretty cool, I thought. You know, so I, by comparing the weight, not just the, uh, you know, the diameter of it. So uh, yeah, the other thing was, okay, uh, you know, when you go to take the batteries off, of course, I didn't follow the, the maintenance of every day coming back and taking the cover off during the water because I never got any water in it. But when I went to change the batteries, this thing was on so tight, I had to use a huge pair of channel locks, <laughs> okay, with a towel around it because I didn't want to damage it, right? So I put a towel around it, and here, I'll show you. <laughs> uh, there we go. 
<laughs> that feels like a little bit of horror. Show this to you. Yeah. You, can, you get a laugh out of it. So with a towel on it, I would just break it so I get loose with the batteries. But now the thing is sealed, right? You don't have to wheel that. And you don't have to take the cone off every time because a lot of times you take the cone off to let the things dry out because the battery would still run because there was a stay damp for who knows how long running your right. battery down. So always, that was well, another maintenance thing I, I, I would do. But that's I, a, Trevor, yeah. you'd like the channel lock story. Yeah, I do like the channel lock, but that is one thing, Dr. Chris, that we probably haven't talked about. So we actually moved the thermistors to the back of the pro. Yeah, so people have actually, a few people have asked. Me. Yeah, so before where they came out of the front, you know, and we put that little bumper on there, especially boats with swim platforms, it, you know, you, you know, it's just, you know, it's rough out and it stuff happens. It's, it's just, you know, you're going to whack the probe on the on the platform, whatever. So you didn't have to run those bumpers, but it was just kind of, a, you know, just kind of a protective thing. But now with the uh, with the the actual sensors coming out the back, the, you know, that's not an issue anymore. Yeah. So that's that's a question people had to um, obviously, you know, we talked about the battery pack being kind of one of those warranty issues where people were running into problems. That was the other problem. And we fixed that as well, just by simply repositioning it. And again, that's where all that testing came in because yeah. we didn't really think about that until we started doing it. We're like, well, why does it need to be there? And, and honestly, it's just, I mean, it's, it's the feedback we get, right? I mean, so, we, you know, with, with, it, with a decade's worth of feedback on, on the other product, it's like, well, we, we kind of know where we want this thing to go. So. Very good. Ron, is there anything else you wanted to add to this before we let you go? Oh, sure. Um, the other thing is, you know, we deal with the currents on Lake Champlain here between Vermont and New York, and we have some pretty significant currents. But in Lake Ontario, when we fish Oak Orchard, we fish the Niagara Bar, uh, the, even Oswego, you know, in, in the Labor Day week area, Little Salmon River, uh, currents are unbelievable. That, but, you know, having our fish hawk probe, especially with a small, you know, especially with a smaller one behind me now, uh, I think it gives us a lot more confidence. When we hit that sweet spot, say we're going northwest and we're catching them in that one direction, going northwest or, you know, and uh, having that smaller profile really, I think, is nothing but uh, an advantage for us. And uh, but, uh, you know, I think the ultra system is is the future and the future is now. Uh, you know, if I think I want to leave anybody with in that this is a, a great uh, product uh, and, uh, you know, we Really appreciate and letting Fishhawk let us test and uh, promote their product. It all started in this garage 12 years ago, inviting some friends over mm -hmm. for taping lures, which start which morphed into you know a bigger venue. And uh, we uh, were really always happy to uh, have Fishhawk along to for sponsorship. And there's a lot of people using them on Lake Champlain. I'm happy to say, but this Ultra System, I think it's it's pretty awesome. Yeah, Ron's Ron's talking about the the frostbite fleet. So one of the things that one of the other things that makes uh, Ron and his buddies kind of the perfect testers is these guys are fishing pretty much all winter. So when when we're wishing we're fishing, they're actually out. Uh, you know, you can see his boat in the background because it's ready to go all the time. He's got a buddy heater in there, and and they're you know if if they're not iced out, they're fishing. So uh, that's that's the other thing. Uh, where uh where ron's been super helpful because we're able to get that feedback you know year round uh you know just because uh yeah people yeah. asked about cold weather yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the frostbite fleet uh the frostbite feed uh kind of proved that proved that out for us so. yeah very good well, ron uh, appreciate you joining us tonight and again sure. thanks so much for everything you've done to help us bring this product to market uh you've been really really important to us and the data and even losing the pros i tell people you know they <laughs> laugh when, when i tell them the story and i go it was actually worked out very well yeah. because he yeah. gave us data on how long that thing actually lasts under the water right yeah. that's why i feel how can i you know make this you know uh worthwhile the the, collecting yeah. the data you know right yeah this uh, friday awesome. This Friday, we're going to go fishing, and this will be my 23rd straight month fishing. And there Richard Hajecki told me last last winter, he texted me, he says, I'm so jealous. <laughs> 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 I told him we've been out like eight I'm times in January. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Ron Winter, uh, thanks so much, and uh, enjoy your day out in the water on Friday. Hey, thanks for having me, having me, guys. Thanks, Ron. All right. That's Ron Winter. Uh and I know there's a lot of people that are joining us late, uh, well over 400 people watching right now. We want to show you the video that we showed at the beginning of the broadcast. 
When we come back, we're going to tell you how you can get, get a chance to win the new Fishhawk Ultra. But let's just show that video. For those of you joining us late, didn't get a chance to see it, you get a chance to see it right now. Twelve miles west of Wilson is the Niagara Bar, where the Niagara River flows into Lake Ontario. It's the perfect storm of nutrient-rich water, which attracts schools of bait fish and big salmon. And they're here for one reason, the pack on the pounds. You won't find a higher concentration of kings in the Great Lakes than right here, right now. The fishing can be challenging. Unpredictable currents can throw off your presentation. My clients expect me to put fish in the boat Knowing the speed and temperature at depth is always important, but here it's imperative. If you don't have a fish off, you're dead in the water. Now, Fishhawk is charging ahead. The new Lithium Series incorporates four decades of experience with the lithium power anglers expect in modern electronics. The maintenance-free probe is 40% smaller and has an internal lithium polymer battery that provides a weekend's worth of fishing on a single charge. Wireless smart charging recharges the probe in minutes. Optional Bluetooth communication and probe depth are also available. I wouldn't dream of fishing without a Fishhawk. And now with the new Lithium Series, Fishhawk electronics are better than ever. Yeah, that was very cool. It was a great uh, time out there. We had uh, photographer Matt Addington out there with us on that trip. And uh, pretty spectacular fishing too. Casey Prisco, Rick and Jackie, we were fishing with them. Got a little information from Pete Alex as well. Pete didn't get on his boat, but uh, he helped us out. He actually borrowed us a mate one day when we were out there as well. So, uh, you know, I don't know if Casey could have caught fish without Pete's just, mate that day, but uh, we caught a few. I just want to know how it is that you get the film the film gigs where we actually catch fish. Right. right? If, if I come, the wind blows, yep. cold front, whatever. That's so, why we don't bring you along. I know. That, that's kind of trouble. <laughs> So it goes. But uh, if you're looking to win that Fishhawk Electronics Ultra, here's what you need to do. Go into the comments, and we're going to pop it up on the screen. Just put fit hashtag Fishhawk Electronics into the comments. That's just Fishhawk Electronics, hashtag Fishhawk Electronics. Put that into the comments. And in about 20 minutes, we're going to do a draw. We've got a, a system set up through the software we're using that will randomly pick someone out of those comments. Doesn't matter if you're on Facebook or YouTube. Just go ahead and put Fishhawk Electronics into the comments, and you will be entered to win. If you do it a million times, let's say you hire your son to put it in there a million times for you, you only get one entry. But, you know, maybe your son could go on with his okay. account. You could do it that way. Yeah. Every account, but only one entry per account, no matter how many times you put fish off electronics in there. So we'll draw that in about 20 minutes. Um, Trevor, anything else that you wanted to get to that, that we didn't talk about yet today? Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think... Uh... You know, we really wanted to do this as an opportunity for people to ask questions and and just uh, you know you know let uh, you know kind of let that feedback uh, guide the discussion. So that's that's that was really the whole purpose of tonight is to to do that. And and uh, I guess you know before we go further, just you know kind of thank all of our existing customers for giving us that feedback over the years because ultimately that feedback is is what created this product. So. Yeah, and we're getting a few questions on there. Just you know. Why didn't we change this? Why didn't we change that? And when we made this product, we wanted to improve the current product, but we wanted to keep that compatibility. And that's why we yep. did what we, we did. We, we've heard that feedback for yeah. you know, years and years and years to be able to, you know, be able to use this with the uh, use this with the uh, the components that are already on your boat. So yeah. new stuff coming at some point, but uh, you know, right now, you know, that's always the development phase. Who knows? Yeah. I mean that's 
that's the thing. I mean, and, and we get the question all the time. It's like, oh, what's next? It's like, I mean, we spent three years on this, and you know, without saying what we're doing, uh, you know, that that cycle never sleeps, right? It can't because it, it yeah. just, you know, to do it right, it just takes uh, it just takes time, and, and uh, um, so yeah, uh, just keep going. Some other questions up there that I saw now. Now the comments are being filled with actually yeah, so yeah, yeah, electronics, yeah. which is yeah. what we asked. Yeah, so that's so, all all yeah. good. Um, but someone else was asking about ball size and like how should they, um, what should they go with as far as a ball? Yeah, I don't, I don't think I would change it any. I mean, so if you're using 12s now, you know, continue to use 12s, I don't know that I would say you're going to be able to get away with a, a lighter ball. Uh, interesting thing, this is something that I kind of figured out over uh, through the testing, but, um, um, you know, even, and this is even at speeds, you know, you know, four miles an hour, but like, uh, well, I think you were on the boat with me one day. I mean, I actually went to like five pound weights, uh, you know, and, and on that particular boat, I've got manual riggers and, and, you know, I went to it just from a standpoint that it's easier to crank a five pound weight than it is a 10 pound weight. Uh, but I was actually amazed, uh, how well that light weight was working. Uh, you know, even with the increased pullback because of the, because of the lightweight, I was actually amazed that, uh, you know, we didn't, you know, we maintained signal the, the entire time even. And these, and these pit lakes that, that I, that we tested, I mean, they're, you know, 300 feet deep. So we have no problem finding, finding deep water. And, uh, um, so yeah, um, uh, from that perspective, uh, uh, the, the blowback was an issue. Now I'm not gonna, I'm not a proponent of, of, uh, you know, there's no real advantage, I don't think, in, in, in having uh, having to pull back that far, but it just kind of proved the point that right. uh, we were just testing to see what the limits yeah. were. Yeah, and uh, you know, getting out there it was actually pretty fun that day. I went out there with you to look at that chart plotter and just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you saw it. Right. I should have I think we do have a picture of that. So yeah. where you can't even see the lake anymore. It's just, <laughs> it's just red, it's just more red light. Yeah. So, so he he wore that that boat out this summer, uh, and again. No, no hooks or lures. You're just out oh. there, just running probes for okay. hours and hours yeah. out on the lake, just uh, making sure that everything does the way that we we want it to, to go. And just go ahead and keep putting those those entries in if you haven't yet. Fishhawk hashtag Fishhawk Electronics. We've got one more guest, and when we come back from him, we're gonna draw the prize. It is uh, Chris Engels from Dark Blue Charters and Tangled Tackle Fishing on YouTube. Chris, welcome to the show. What's going on, guys? Hope you can hear me okay. Yeah, I sound great. We can hear you great. And uh, you're hope another you guy. Hope you can't see me very good, though. A <laughs> <laughs> face for radio, right? It's, it's that time of year where we're, we're growing our beards out a little bit. we got to make it through the winter. Right, yeah. I got mine going now for about the last nine months. So, yeah, she's there <laughs> for sure. There you go. Uh, Chris, you're one of the people who had an opportunity to use this ahead of time. Uh, just tell us about what your experience has been like with the new system. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, I got mine. It seems like uh, watching the show here with everybody else, I got mine quite a bit later than everyone else. I got mine in, uh, I think, early September of this year. Seems like everybody else was testing for a lot longer. But Those guys were in the there. video. What's that? <laughs> Those guys were in the video. Yeah, the nice video too, by the way. That was nice to play that right now in the middle of winter, guys, or the beginning. Right. right? <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Uh, yeah, I got mine early September, and uh, you guys requested that I run as many trips as I can on it before I charge the probe. And I think we got 12 trips, maybe 13, and uh, never had the probe go out, never had to charge it. When I first got it, I threw it on the charger. It, it was charged up within 45 minutes. I don't know how, you know, what charge level it was when it got here. But it was definitely fully charged within 45 minutes, and it lasted those 12 trips without any issues whatsoever. It's a nice system. Yeah, talk a little bit about, uh, you talked about your battery life and what you got. That's incredible that you're able to get that. Tell us a little bit about kind of the, the fishability of it and what you saw in your set running that probe behind. Yeah, not a problem. So the, you know, obviously the first thing you notice is the smaller the smaller size. And uh, like Captain Hijeki said, anytime you can get less blowback on something when you're out fishing the Great Lakes with multiple currents, uh, multiple depths, anytime you can get less blowback, that's a bonus. And uh, without a doubt, you're getting less blowback on that smaller, that smaller sizing on that probe. Love the camo on it. I mean, I call it camo just because it's a darker color, but I love that non-reflective, non-shiny, um, you know, just a blend, more blending into that water, that deeper water, 
because um, we normally fish uh, pretty deep waters out there. So more that that can blend in, I think that's a huge advantage. We tried that thing down, uh, I know at least 175 feet, if not more, and never had a problem losing signal. Uh, so that great signal, great signal refresh, very accurate, I found as well. Uh, watching things on my, uh, on my, uh, on my graphs, I found that thing was very accurate. So all in all, it's just a solid, solid product. I think you guys knocked it out of the park with this thing. You talk a little bit about that camel and I find that really interesting. What do you think it is about that dark collar that, that just makes it, um, just less visible to the fish. I mean, to me, you'd almost think you'd want a lighter color, but it seems like more and more I talk to people who are like dark color, dark color, dark color. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, and that, that's way above my, my pay grade, Chris. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think uh, I think you're absolutely right in the way that a lot of people are thinking. I think the more you can blend into the natural environment, the less things you can have. Sometimes you can have too much stuff down there. Uh, you, you can have too many divers. Too many downriggers, too much, too many flashers, too many rotators, whatever it may be. Sometimes you can just have too much stuff down there, and it's actually hurting your fishing more than it's helping it. And a lot of people would think, oh, the more commotion you get down there, the more, the more turbulence, the more noise, whatever. That's a good thing. And I found many times that that's the exact opposite. So I think it blends into that more than anything else. Some days you just want a little less, and that's just one less thing you got to worry about. Yeah, before uh, we go any further, I see some people just blowing up the comments. Um, you can enter 100 times under the same account. It's only an account you just one. So just go ahead and just one time, and, and you're good. And, and it, it's not us picking it. It's a, We actually have software that's doing it, so we have no idea who's going to win, but it will only register one time per account. Trevor, uh, any questions for Chris? Yeah, I mean, uh, I wanted to make sure that we had Chris on because, uh, you know, we had all these Lake Ontario guys on before. We needed to make sure that that, they, that Lake Michigan was in the house. And, and uh, so, Chris, thank you. Uh, I saw uh, Phil Rutherford was in. Phil's one of our yeah. Michigan guys. So. Phil's been sharing the posts all week, too. So okay. thanks to Phil for helping get the word out. For yeah, this. so, you know, we, we did uh, we did uh, spread the love between, uh, between uh, uh, Lake Ontario, Lake Michigan, and, and Lake Erie, for that matter. So. Yeah, we'll have more captains on the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast in the next few weeks. Some other uh, Great Lakes or some other Lake Michigan guys that were able to use the probe. Uh, we really got some great feedback from a few people this week. So it's been fun to see that stuff come in. So we'll, we'll have more and more people on here on the podcast in the next few weeks that have, can, that have used this and can tell you a little bit about that as we go on. But uh, if you want to find out more about Great Lakes angling, if you're just getting into it or if you're a season and pro and you just want to learn more chris ingles has i i think you could say probably the best youtube channel out there uh, definitely the most complete yeah it's i mean chris covers just everything you can think of on his youtube channel it's tangled tackle fishing on youtube and there's tons of videos on there you do a lot of q a stuff so just appreciate you chris doing that for our community and, and helping people just become better anglers no, oh, guys, it's my pleasure. I'm always happy to help out. You know, we're not born knowing how, knowing how to do these kind of things. I had to learn. We all had to learn. So I'm just trying to shorten the learning curve a little. So thank you for the shout out on that and the very kind words. He's Chris Ingalls from Dark Blue Charters and Tangled Tackle Fishing on YouTube. Thanks so much, Chris, for joining the show. And thanks again for helping us develop this. You were a late stage tester, but uh, your information was, was very important to us and just making sure everything worked the way that we wanted it to. It's no problem. Hey, Trevor, I want to say also, if you want to go out on a boat sometime and maybe catch fish, give me a call. I have to take any time. <laughs> yeah, that is going to happen. Uh, you know, so, you know, one of the good things about actually bringing this to market now is that means I don't have to go drive around back and forth. At home. So, so maybe this year I'll actually get to come over and fish. And, and uh, actually for a long time, you know, my family, you know, in the early days, you know, we would actually go and stay in Frankfurt for like the month of August. And, and honestly, you know, that's been a while now, but, uh, um, but you know, that's like the last time where I've got to fish Lake Michigan a lot. So I think it's time that we, uh, I think it's time we bring that back. So come on over, Trevor, anytime. I'll take both of you uh, guys. Yeah, we're Appreciate definitely going to make a Michigan swing this year. Yeah, we do. Just, well, we've already talked. We've already planned that. We're making a Michigan swing yeah, this year, so we're definitely going to take you up on that. So. All right. Sounds good, guys. Take care. All right. Thank, Thank you, Chris Angles. Thanks so much. All right, folks. Anything else before we do what everybody wants us to do right now? Oh, Everybody's hung out with the show. We really haven't lost. All. I mean, we yeah. almost running where we were at peak. So everybody hanging out, wanting to win. 
this. Let's do it. Let's this do will it. Be the, this will be the first. It will be numero uno. Numero uno. First time using this giveaway tool, too. Looks like we have 200 and, uh, 370 entries. Hit draw, and let's go. Here it is. That's pretty cool. It's like a slot machine. Oh. Somebody's name's going to be up there, and they're going to be like, I'm going to win, and then the next person's going to pop up. Bob Engna is your winner. Bob watched it on Facebook tonight. Bob, congratulations. You won the unit. And go ahead and put send us a message on Facebook, a private message with your address on it. Just go ahead and hit us, hit the direct message to us. Don't uh, distribute to the world. Just send us the private message <laughs> with your address on it, and we'll get that unit set up for you. I'm going to pull these. We don't need these headphones yeah. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Chris is gone. Thank you. Uh, but thanks, to everybody, for joining us today. I mean, we were kind of hoping 100 people would watch, and, and we blew that out of the park. So that was pretty it's, awesome. You know, you know what's pretty cool is, so, you know, we've been doing this since 2009. So it's, what's pretty cool is, when it, and I can, I'm like you, I can barely see that name in there. But it's pretty cool to see the number of names that, like, right. from, you know, we'll call it back in the day, I see, like, Dale DeCord up there. You know, uh, again, it, it's, it, you know, probably the most rewarding part of this whole thing is just the relationships that we've built with, with fishermen and, and customers over the years and, and again you know thanks uh you know thanks all you guys for for your support and, and your feedback and and uh, again your feedback is what uh is what uh, you know drives us to to create new product and and really um you know we hope we uh we hope we you know continue to deliver on on uh on that mission so yeah very good and uh, if you want to learn more about the product the products are live on the site right now you can actually order the ultra the other stuff, we're still about a week or two out on being able to fulfill it, so uh, we're not putting that up there right now. But uh, you know, you can go on there and order an ultra, but just check things out. We also, if you enjoyed the video and you want to watch that again, that video is right on the front page of, of the home page as well. So everything is up on the fishhawkelectronics.com website. You can check it out there. But again, thanks so much to everybody for joining us tonight. And thanks to my buddy Dan who stepped up and uh, came over and was the technical director for us tonight and ran this thing flawlessly, flawlessly. Like, like he's been a veteran at doing this. So uh, very, very cool to have everybody join us tonight. I appreciate everybody coming out and uh, a lot more good things to come in the future. We're going to go to Niagara again in February, so we'll have that uh that virtual show for you once again from Niagara. So we're excited about bringing that to you. A lot of good stuff coming. Just hang in tight, and uh, we'll be fishing here pretty soon. Trevor, closing remarks. You're good. I'm good, man. Thanks uh, again. Thanks everybody for spending some time with us this evening. Thanks for putting this together. And let's, yeah, let's go. Thanks for doing. It. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks again. Good night. <laughs>